Protests continue in cities across America, a constant reminder not just of a number of cases of extreme injustice that have led to those protests, but also that for the most part, there has been very little actually done to respond to the concerns of so many Americans about police brutality, inequities in the criminal justice system, and more. And we have a guest joining us now whose family has directly experienced one of these events. We're joined now by Kimberly Ambler Jones. Kimberly, welcome to the Damage Report. Thank you, thank you for having me. So Kimberly, your brother um, um, Javier was, was killed by police uh, in front of live PD cameras back in March of 2019. We, we spoke about this case a few months ago on the show. Um, I know that it's it's been more than a year now that you've been um, working for, for some kind of justice in this case. Um, what, what, what's happened since um, that terrible incident back in March of last year? Well, it's been more than a year that we've been working for justice, but it's only been uh, three months, almost three months, that we've actually known exactly what happened. Mm -hmm. um, my brother passed away March 28th, 2019. We didn't know for 15 months exactly what happened to him, how he died. We just were told that he died in police custody. But there was no detail given. Um, the more we kept asking, the least information we were getting, just more run around telling us to call this number, call this number, find out. Um, we can't even find out what county, because I'm not sure if y'all are familiar with Austin, but mm -hmm. it's separated yeah. into two separate counties. It's Williamson County, Travis County. We didn't know what county he was in. Um, actually, at the time of his passing, we weren't able to go view his body. My mom tried to go and you know, see him. We didn't get to see him until before his funeral, like literally the day before we had his funeral. Um, so it's been hard. I mean, it was hard before, but since the tape was been released and the world finally got to see what happened, it's been just like reliving that moment all over again. But even worse to see, you know, somebody so close to me experience that much hate towards them and not, it wasn't deserved. So it's been a really hard experience for me and my family both. I, I, I mean, no matter what had happened afterward, it, you know, it's unthinkable. But the idea that they would drag out the grieving process by hiding so much information, I can't understand what possible excuse they could have for that. I not only wouldn't give you basic information about what happened along what timeline where, but that they knew that there was direct video evidence of it available. How could you possibly be so cruel and inhuman? And I don't know what what can be done to compensate the family for you know that horrible situation, but 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 I certainly do hope that now that that information has gotten out, that people have more information about it, that there that something is going to happen. What what are your expectations for for the future when it comes to this? I know that you're involved in an organization that's been holding events to try to raise awareness about the situation and push for something. What's the hope for the future? Well, the hope is because like people always ask me like. When you say you want justice, what exactly does that mean? I feel like this is happening way too often in America. And in my brother's case, his is a little bit different because, like I said, they try to hide it. They were hoping that it would just get swept under the rug and that nobody was going to look further into it. And we were just going to, it was going to be done and over with. And they're going to continue on doing what they've been doing this whole time. Well, I, my whole thing is to bring awareness to it because I want them to know, like I want everybody to know, like this is what we're dealing with in our own community, in our own backyard. There's still people that live in Austin, Williamson County that have no clue that this is what happened. And the deputies that took my brother's life, they work for a sheriff, which the sheriff, I feel like he's just as responsible as they are. And there's been a lot of news articles coming out lately about the different things that have happened while he's been sheriff for Williamson County that are just now coming out. And people need to understand that a sheriff's position is an elected position. Mm -hmm. So you elected this person to look over your county and provide protection for your county. And that's not what they're doing. They're causing chaos and they're their own little gang. Honestly, that's what it is. They're a menace to society. They're their own little gang and they're using their power to hurt people, and unfortunately, a lot of them is people of color. And 
take lives and they feel like they're in a higher position so they're okay to be able to get away with that like having qualified immunity like oh we you know he he didn't pull over when we asked him to pull over but i feel like the what he did didn't require the reaction to take his life mm-hmm. for having high beams on so our goal ultimately is i want justice for my brother as far as the ones that took his life should be held responsible and when i say held responsible just like if i took somebody's life i would go to jail that's mm-hmm. where they need to go also they're no different just because they have a badge that they should be able to take somebody's life i'm in the healthcare field and if somebody is reaching out to me telling me that they can't breathe that they need help my job is to provide them with that help and i know all deputies all law enforcement they are given the right courses to take a certified cpr course to make sure that they need to do whatever they need to do until the um, ambulance gets there and emergency response gets there to be able to take over but as he's calling out for them to help him they just continue to cause him more harm so i'm like so at what point do you believe this person or did it was that not even the thought like you didn't believe him or you did believe him you just didn't care that you were about to kill this man like, I don't know what their thought process was, but the goal is I want justice for him. And I just don't want this to keep happening. Like, it keeps happening to people. And we keep seeing every day justice for this person, justice for this person. Until we hold somebody accountable, it's going to keep happening. Once they see, okay, like, hey, we're not getting away with this anymore, then they're going to stop because they're not going to get away with it. They don't want to go to jail. Who wants? I don't want to go to jail. I know you don't want to go to jail. So I'm going to make sure my actions make it to where I don't end up in prison. So... That's what our ultimate goal is. And then we're also just trying to help other people because it's been hard. Like, I feel like we've reached a lot of people with just a small group of people that have been helping me. And mm-hmm. we're nobody. Yeah. Like, we don't have a big platform or anything like that. And I feel like some stories get more publicity than other stories, which I don't agree with. I feel like these are all human lives. Nobody's life deserves to be taken. No one life is more important than the other. So I feel like they all should get the same amount of publicity and the same amount of effort in fighting for justice for that individual um so that's another goal of ours like we want to help people that are dealing with similar situations and use our platform because we've kind of created one that's a little bit growing and is getting bigger and bigger to be able to help other people get their stories out there as well because i feel like we've all been silent for too long Mm -hmm. and if we're just going to keep being silent it's going to keep happening and i have the children and i don't want to ever have to deal with my what my parents had to deal with so that's what my ultimate goal is is just to keep helping people and to bring awareness to my brother's story and ultimately get justice for his life being taken wow um yeah and you know like we we have you know this huge sustained um movement like the biggest movement of our lives basically going on and and you know, if you if you look at polls, people seem to be taking it more seriously. They seem to get a little bit of it. Um, but at the same time, you have the the police force, the police unions, a lot of politicians that have sort of doubled down and have they've never even admitted that a serious conversation needs to be had. You know, that there could be anything that all of these millions of people are saying, this is my experience, here's what I know, here's what needs to be done. They don't even acknowledge that that has to be a conversation that's had. So it's like, it seems like there's reasons to be hopeful and, and reasons not. Um, but but I can't imagine considering your own personal experience with this, um, what this time must have been like. Um, for, for people who are watching this, what can they do? Whether they live in the Austin area or perhaps, you know, they're somewhere else around America, what can they do to help well to help us specifically um we actually have a website is justiceforhavierambler.com and on there we post all of our events if anybody's interested in assisting and helping out with our events they're listed on there um we also have um right now we don't have anything we're waiting until the um the new travis county da takes over because we were supposed to go to the grand jury in august Margaret Moore, which was the Travis County, well, she still is currently the Travis County DA until the beginning of the year. She backed out of taking the court, the case to court. So we're waiting until January when the new person steps in position before we could do anything else further in that end of it. But um, we're doing a mural for my brother. It's going to be for, it's going to be in September, actually, we're in September. I think we're in August, though. So. 
um, is going to be released this month. And we have a GoFundMe right now going for the artist that all the funds go to him for taking his time and, you know, just wanting to honor us with something that we can remember my brother by. And like a lot of his friends in Austin, you know, I live in a different city. I live like about an hour away from Austin. And, but he had a lot of people that loved him where we grew up. And then he has a lot of people that loved him in Austin. So we just wanted something special that we could look at and people could just look at and drive by and see who he was. Cause he was an amazing person. Like his personality was just, I could, I feel like people missed out on getting to meet this genuinely nice teddy bear. He was a big guy and people thought he was intimidating just by looking at him, but he had the biggest heart to go along with his big size. So I feel like so many people have reached out in ways of trying to like wanting to do something and be there. We're like, go to, go when we do the unveiling for the mural, come out, come out and support, um, go donate to the GoFundMe so that we could get the artist what he deserves because he's a talented, talented man from Georgetown, which is from Williamson County. So it made it even more special. He's from the same location and we just want to support him um, and his art, just supporting local artists from the community. So that's a good way to help. And um, just stay focused on our page. We put all kinds of updates on there um, to let people know what we're doing and get involved in the movement. And then the most important thing is to make sure you're voting. I mean, I've always been a person to vote. I just feel like it's something that I'm supposed to do. And I can't complain about what's going on in the world if I'm not using my voice. So that's a way to use your voice is by voting. So I just want everybody to make sure that they're registered to vote and making sure they're voting. And that, that's not just at the national level. That includes your local community. I feel like that affects me more than at the national level what's going on. If you don't know who's running your own community, they may not be on the same page as what you're on. You need to make sure the person that is in that position to make your community better sees the same thing that you see and they want the same change that you want. And if they don't, then you need to do your research and find out who does and step up and get involved. So those are the main things. And just keep sharing. Like I just want, I've been on Facebook passionately. I've been taking a little bit of a break, just a little mental break for a little bit. But I've just been on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, everything, just sharing updated information as much as I can. Just try to get his story out there. I just need the world to know, like, this is what we deal with on a regular basis. And this yeah. is what my family has to deal with for the rest of our lives. Yeah. Well, uh, we want to thank you for joining us. Um, hopefully, our audience can can be of some help. Um, a lot of great, great um, tips and, and roots for for trying to push for change uh, that you listed there. So, um, you know, I know that the process is taking forever, and it's probably going to take quite a bit longer. But but I hope that your family does uh, eventually get justice because what happened to you should never happen to to any family. Um, so, Kimberly, thank, thank you. you for joining us. Thank you. And we know it's going to happen. We just have to be patient. I'm not usually a patient person, but that I've always prayed for patience and I always feel like God tries to tell me like, I can't provide you with something that I've already given you. So this is my time where now I have to access that patience that I have. So we're okay with it. We're like, delay does not mean that it's gonna be denied. Yeah. So we're gonna be patient and it's gonna happen. So. Thank you again. Thank you, you guys have a good day. Check out the Damage Report podcast each day, wherever you get your podcasts, whether Pocket Casts or Stitcher or iTunes. You can join me as I give you the news and stories you want, with a range of co-hosts and interview guests jumping in on the fun each day. Again, that's the Damage Report, wherever you get your podcasts. And if you get them at iTunes, don't forget to rate and review. Sometimes I'll read them live on the show.